In a nutshell, the organ, as it passed through centuries and countries, picked up sounds along the way. And the precursors were the Chang in China and the panpipes of Greece. That goes back thousands of years. It was used for Christian purposes only in the 10th or the 11th centuries. But oddly enough, the very first organist recorded to have played um, a religious service was in the 3rd century. He, was played, he played to wake up Dionysus. This project went through five music department chairmen and three deans. The builder was chosen, Pete Visser, and then from there it was just making uh, adjustments to the concept. There was about, I would say, about eight, eight and a half months of design work. Now we had a team of about 30 people that actually, you know, cabinet makers, woodworkers, metal workers, and, uh, and, and apprentices that, uh, that helped us make the organ, uh, uh, made parts of it. Uh, the, I did all the design work, all the drawings, all the, uh, all the engineering, all the pipe dimensions, everything. I was told by Frank Speller, look, this is what I want. I don't think it's possible, but this is what I want. And I want to be able to play Bach, but I also want to play Tournemere, and I want to play Regular, and I want to play the Renaissance, all the way into the avant-garde. And that's a tall order. Most organ builders said, you can't do that. But you can do an organ that can do everything very well. And I, and I said to Dr. Speller that I can do it. He had enough trust in me that he said, OK, let's come up with something. Well, this is the 25th anniversary of the instrument. It's essentially a Baroque organ. Oh, it has over 5,000 pipes. It has 97 ranks or rows of pipes and it has 67 stops. It is uh, true to its model, which is uh, late Renaissance, early Baroque, uh, North German, North Dutch, and uh, it does all with such beauty. I've played recitals, amongst other places, at Notre Dame Paris and Westminster Abbey London, and I can assure you this instrument will play circles around them. It's one of the best instruments in the world. It's the largest organ in Texas, and when it was put in, it was the largest tracker organ in the country. A tracker organ is the better term for a tracker organ. It's a mechanical organ. It's an organ that is mechanically operated. The key actually opens the valve to the organ pipe. This gives the organist a little bit of control, like a flutist has the control on a flute by the amount of air they blow across the aperture. Well, let me show you something interesting. This is the low A on a piano. Then it goes down to a low C. 16 vibrations per second. Sounds like the wrong end of a buffalo. <laughs> Organ design is a, is, a, is a work between scientific and artistic, as well as mechanical, structural balances. So the organ has to be able to hold itself up. This one weighs about around 35 tons or so. Then the organ had to be playable. Mechanically, the organist had to be able to do fast trills on the keys, like you do on a piano. But then the organ case also has to look like a sculpture. So we make it look pretty, it make it look attractive. And 
Uh, it was said early on when the organ first was installed, this was the most dangerous thing on campus because people would come in at the top of the hall out there. They wouldn't see the first step because they were so in awe of what they saw that they, they tripped over that first step. And that happened many times. It still does to some people when they see it the first time. And I've sit in the audience over here and listen to the organ. And I've heard people say, well, when I go to heaven, that's the kind of organ I want there. And I hope that the, the uh, that, that shows like this would help us further the arts and the people's understanding that it doesn't all work with transistors and diodes and resistors, but it works by things that real people make with their hands. After it's all done, it becomes a work of art. Become a DocuBlogger. Log on to DocuBloggers.org to share your opinions and story ideas, or get out your camera and create your own DocuBlog.